Well, the Ohio State Buckeyes will graduate a senior class with plenty of honors, lots of wins and accolades, but at this point, no titles, unless you want to count meaningless division crowns. A victory tomorrow for Wisconsin, and that changes, as the fifth-ranked OSU Buckeyes will claim their first official league crown since 2009. Urban Meyer knows exactly what awaits his team in the championship game. Uh, we're facing an excellent team. Uh, Gary Anderson's a, a dear friend of mine, great, great football coach. We work together at Utah, um, and uh, what he's done... They lost their front seven on defense. We just, you know, I just had a meeting, went through it with our staff, and uh, to come back and lead the country. I think they're leading the country. They're top, top ten and off, uh, pass defense and rush defense. Uh, very, very good players, but extremely well coached. And obviously, we understand that there's also another Heisman guy going to be on the field, uh, Gordon, who is. Um, well, Gary tells me the best thing about it, he's a wonderful kid, a young man too. So that's uh, that's good for college football. Buckeyes will be without their Heisman candidate as Cardell Jones will play in place of injured JT Barrett. Meyer and quarterbacks coach Tom Herman have had glowing praise for the redshirt sophomore for his natural gifts, but also for his maturity and football intellect. He's a big dude. And um, fast. Yeah, big and, and pretty fast for that size. Uh, probably doesn't have quite the same short range change of direction that JT has, but long range speed and the ability to kind of open it up and stride. He, he's pretty fast. So, uh, yeah, I, I think you guys have all seen him run the football because a lot of times when he does get in, that's that's really all that we're going to do at that point in the game. But uh, um, I'm excited to see what, what he can do. I, th I think he, he's got a chance to be pretty, pretty effective at it. Buckeyes are making back-to-back -back appearances in the Big Ten title game, while the Badgers are making their third in the game's four-year existence. Two good teams with plenty of history against each other lining up for the championship. Yeah, it, it, it's it, the great thing about the Big Ten is there's some great rivalries. Not that you play them, I mean, obviously, that with the separations of the of the of the uh, divisions now, you don't play them every year. But I know when I was in school, it was it was a big rivalry, you know, and it's only a rivalry because they've been very very good at what they do, and obviously we've been very good at what we do, and um, those were, those were kind of create those rivalries. But you know, there's a lot of people out there that say Ohio State's their number one rivalry, so. Uh, that's just a part of the game that you're going to always have when you're here. Well, shortly after Wisconsin beat Minnesota to earn a trip to the Big Ten title game, Chase and Anderson, Gary Anderson's son, a linebacker on the Wisconsin team, knowing that JT Barrett got hurt against Michigan and that the Badgers would be taking on Cardell Jones in the Big Ten title game, well, he pulled up some YouTube highlights of Cardell Jones from his Cleveland Glenville days and showed him to his dad, Gary Anderson. Mike Miller from WIMA 1150, our Buckeye Insider, joins us now. And, well, that kind of sobered uh, Gary Anderson up a little bit when he, when he saw the athletic talent of Cardell Jones. I love that. And obviously, a coach's son would do that kind of a thing. But, and you know, that's what I've been referencing is simply that, that Jones has tremendous physical ability. He's performed at a lot of different levels. He's had an interesting storyline, really, that has led him uh, to this point at Ohio State. And I think he's really poised to succeed. Simply, I don't care who you are, you, it's hard to make your starting debut in the conference championship game. I guess the good news is he has a solid uh, cast of characters around him, a pretty darn good now proven offensive line. So he has a lot of, lot of things going for him in his first full game. Obviously, it's going to be quite interesting to see what the Ohio State offensive game plan is going mm -hmm. to be. I I'm sure there's some people who are going to think Cardell Jones, he's a big physical guy, let him run the ball. Well, what if he gets hurt? All of a sudden, you got to worry about do you use Jalen Marshall as the full time quarterback if Cardell Jones goes out, or do you burn the retro on Steven Collier? The one thing Urban Meyer did say was, we're not saving anybody. Yeah. We're, going to, we're playing to win this game this week. My sense is if he gets hurt, it's going to be all about. Uh, uh, Jalen Marshall, Mark, that Jalen that Jalen has played enough uh, time through the course of the year uh, that they're probably really coaching him up. Uh, he hasn't been that available this week, I don't think, to talk a whole lot. I think really it's about uh, he's going to play some quarterback or at least from that so-called Wildcat uh, formation. That, that That is probably the contingency plan for Ohio State, but I don't have any insight on that necessarily. That would just be my suspicion. Well, and Tom Herman pointed out that while JT Barrett got hurt running the ball, yeah. Braxton Miller got hurt while he was throwing the ball. Yeah. So injuries are going to happen. You can't protect your guys too much. Another injury situation at Melvin Gordon. Towards the end of the win over Minnesota, the Wisconsin Heisman Trophy candidate at running back had some ankle issues, perhaps was intentionally twerked by one of the uh, 
Gophers. We, we won't get into that, but right. he's expected to be 100%. And this is a guy who's had a fantastic season. The 400-yard game against Nebraska, a leading candidate to be a Heisman, to win the Heisman Trophy. There's going to be some the higher debate with the Oregon quarterback, yeah. but Melvin Gordon is certainly right up there and having just a dream season for the Badgers. Yeah, I mean, he's a home run hitter in every respect as a, as a very good running back. I don't think, though, he's the kind of guy Ohio State can't control. And when I mean can't control, that is uh, keep him to a credible yardage, maybe a, a 130 or less, that type of thing, and control him on conversion downs, third down and long or fourth down or or almost any time he gets the football, control him to prevent the big play. To me, that would be Ohio State's mission against Melvin Gordon, and I think that's very doable. You look at the historical record between Ohio State and Wisconsin, dating back the last 20 meetings, which would take us to 1990, that's when Barry Alvarez took over Wisconsin. And ever since Barry Alvarez has been in Madison, the Badgers have been a different program. Despite a couple coaching changes, they've had the same basic identity. They've been a run-heavy team. Well, in those 20 meetings, Ohio State has held Wisconsin to almost 65 yards below their average rushing game that for that particular season. And there's only been three of those games where they've gone over what they've rushed on average that year. Ohio State historically has done a good job of handling this Badger rush through some very good Wisconsin offensive lines and running backs. I think maybe that's because Ohio State has been willing to sell out for the rush uh, because through a lot of that time period, when have the Badgers been known to have really a, a much more than an average passing game. They've had some excellent receivers on occasion that have made big plays, but they've never been that established as an outstanding passing team as a part of their overall uh, package. And I think really that's more of the same this year. They've shuffled quarterbacks. They've settled on the veteran, Joel Stave. But uh, I believe we may see a little more of that Saturday night in Indianapolis where the Buckeyes do the proverbial defensive sellout and are prepared to overplay the rush on different situations and, and hope for the best. For the 12th week in a row, I'm sure you're going to say you have high hopes, but what are your <laughs> predictions for Ohio State and Wisconsin and Indianapolis? How about this week I have realistic hopes, <laughs> uh, Mark, uh, for the Buckeyes against uh, Wisconsin. I think it, the whole emotional thing is going to be important for Ohio State with the uh, with the loss of the of the walk on uh, Kara George and that that awful story there and 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 obviously the loss of JT Barrett. I think the Buckeyes are going to find a way against a very good but not necessarily an overbearing great Wisconsin team. I'll pick the Buckeyes something like 28-24. All right, thank you very much, Mike. And win or lose Sunday afternoon, we'll find out Ohio State's postseason fate as the College Football Playoff Committee will announce their final rankings at 12:45 on Sunday. Andy, back to you.